We got to change our mindset. We got to get our eyes off this carnal flesh and this carnal world and our own worth because that's what we do, isn't it? God, have me, you want me to do what, Lord? Well, I, I can't do that. So we're calling God a liar. Whether <coughs> knowingly or unknowingly, we're calling him a liar. I don't want to be the one calling God a liar, do you? Verse 13, These all died in faith, not having received the promise, promises, <clears throat> but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. What do you declare? Where is your allegiance? I want to get back to this sort of topic we've been on for a while pick a side right mm -hmm. so much of my life I've pledged allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and I think I really neglected my allegiance to the kingdom of God where's your allegiance do you think plainly that wait a minute I know that this time here is simply I'm a stranger in a strange land and I look for another kingdom are you looking forward to the return of Christ I know I am that's a last check to GMAC I'm going to have to write I'm telling you <laughs> you know I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> you know I have had enough bondage and oppression in my life and I have had like one ten thousandth of something that these guys back in the back actually dealt with. Look, I look forward to the coming of Christ. Some man said to me one day, if if uh, if heaven is nothing more than sitting around in a circle saying holy, 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 I don't know if I want to go. And granted, doesn't sound terribly fun unless you've been in the presence of God and you know that there's no other better place to be. If you if you have stood and and you have well sometimes it's hard to stand in the presence of God frankly but if you have been in the presence of God and experienced him in the same room with you in the same tent with you or wherever it has been and you're in worship let me tell you there is there is no other place you want to other be you want to stay there and you never want it to end I've experienced that on more than one occasion and if heaven is is that let's go because this world's got nothing to offer me. Pretty painful. Down nothing. To, yeah. <laughs> anything I get, I had to work for. Right? This world's got nothing to offer me. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared them a city for, their, for them a city. Verse 17. By faith, and we're looking at all these things, or what? By what? Faith. By, faith. <clears throat> By faith, when he was tried, offered up Isaac... He that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Why did he do it? Because God told him to. What was the demonstration of his faith? Obedience. Obedience, Obedience in something that was a simple thing or something terribly difficult. Verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall all thy seed be called. Now here is God telling him, offer up your son by which the promise is to come. Now, in my mind, if he's dead, the promises ain't coming. That's the natural thinking. Let's see what Abraham was thinking. Verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Abraham knew in his mind, had resolved in himself knowingly that, look, God said he's the promise. By him comes the promise. Therefore, even if I kill him, God's going to raise him from the dead. But he didn't have to, did he? Because who was there waiting for him? Jesus, the ram in the thicket. Jesus was already there waiting. God had already prepared a way. If we can understand the fundamentals of that story and what God does, when God asks you to do the impossible and you, regardless of what you see or how you see it, take that step to walk in it, 
guess what? He's already prepared a way. That's our God. That's right. Amen? That's our God. If we could see the way, it would not take faith. Right? Yep. Not seeing and obeying is faith. Paul says we walk by faith, not by what? Sight. Because if we walked by sight and our carnal judgment, do you know what would happen? We'd screw it all up. We're not equipped to judge because we're not God. He's God. We're equipped to do one thing. Obey. Right? That's what we're equipped to do. Choose to obey and obey. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. <coughs> Verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Let's look right here for a second. We've been talking a little bit about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How did they stand before the king and say, Okay, oh, we don't speak to you lightly, but we'll be delivered of you this day. I'm paraphrasing greatly. How did they do it? By faith. And they made a stand for that which was righteous and that, was, that which was right. And even more so, whatever the consequence of that stand was, what did they do? Look for the loophole? No. no, they stood in that. And they accepted the consequences for their faith. When we were back involved in the Patriot Movement some 12, 15 years ago, you know, the thing that always caught me as odd is that people would make these great grand declarations about faith in God, but when it came to actually operating in that faith or suffering the consequences of that faith, there was nobody to be found. Now, I don't particularly care to be the one, to be the martyr. Uh, it's not something I would look forward to. You, Paul? No. Me either. But if you're going to make a stand for righteousness... There's going to be consequences for that stand. And when those consequences come, what are you going to do? Are you going to yet stand in, those cons stand in the midst of those consequences? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Daniel, like others? Or is your conviction going to change? If you make their resolution, which was whatever happens is going to be deliverance. Right. Yeah. But that's something you got to choose. Well, I'm talking about faith in God here. I'm not talking about rubber meeting the road type of faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? I mean, we're learning a little bit. Phil's learning a little bit about how to walk in faith, and it may cost him his job. That's scary for you, right? Yeah. Christ got your back? Oh, yeah. He's got your front? Yeah. <laughs> Are you in him? Yes. Then you can walk in faith. To hell with the consequences, Right? Because that's where freedom. the that's right. You actually, if you can get past that, get through the fear. Does God give you a spirit of fear? No. Love, love, so much. Does God put fear on you? No. Does He give you fear, Philip? No. So when it comes on you, what are you to do? Resist the devil, and he will what? Freedom. Flee from you. We're in a war, people. Yeah. And it's a war of faith. And his weapon is what? Unbelief. We're to hold up what? The shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Do you see how this is working? We're in a war. We're in a battle. And he wants to kill you. The slowest, most painful, most debilitating, most humiliating way is that we'll just be fine with him. He's not a humane guy. I'm speaking of Satan. God's given you all you need, everything you need, to stand. Stand. We could flip over to Ephesians. It says, having done all to stand, do what? Stand. stand. 